Hello, we are moving now to another topic called the P median, right? Which is not a coverage anymore, uh, but it is made out of two different components a location problem and an allocation problem. So, not only do we need to decide where we're we going to locate the facilities, we also need to uh, decide how we how we're we going to allocate each demand node or demand unit, centroid, whatever, to uh, the location. So it's actually a very complicated problem to solve compared to maybe some of these coverage models that we talked about earlier in the class. So I'd like to show you a uh, little problem here. Um, and those triangles represent potential location for schools. Okay. Now each of these purple uh, dots here represent a demand node. And the question is, if, for instance, I could afford to open all the facilities, right? So one, two, three, four, five. Okay, that's very easy in this case. I can open all of them, right? Right here. And then the next question would be, how should the demand be allocated? Well, the main objective of the p-median is to minimize the distance or the travel. Now, assuming here that the travel is sort of circular at Euclidean, what you can do is then assign each demand node or demand unit to its closest facility, right? So this one, probably this one here, okay. This one, this one here, this one probably here, this one probably here, let's say this one here, this one here, 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 this one here, this one probably here, 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 like this. So you assign to the closest one. And this one for sure here, and then this one maybe over here. Okay? So those are also sometimes called spider map. Now, that's a pretty straightforward problem. This one would be much harder to solve. If P is equal to 2, which do you choose? And I don't know the answer, right? We could do all this combination if we wanted to. But let's assume that we have the you know, optimal solution, and let's suppose that this is the optimal solution, right? Then you will see that generally, right, the demand node will be assigned to their closest facility. So I'll just do this quickly here. Okay, and maybe this one here. Now, there are some issues, and I say generally they're assigned to their closest, but not always. And that could be the problem when you have capacities, right? So schools, for instance, they work at a certain capacity. So you may not always have this assignment to the closest uh, open uh, facility. But that's a desirable goal. So we'd like to introduce some new notation to our problem, right? Um, the a uh, new uh, decision variable is xij, which is equal to 1 if i, demand node i, is allocated to facility j and 0 otherwise. We have this new uh, variable, uh, although in the coverage model it was we used x's, so now we just switched, uh, which is y sub j is equal to 1 if we open a j, right? So if we, the facility is, is selected, 0 otherwise. Uh, and then we have dij, which is the distance from i to j, and then you also have P, which limits the number of facilities. Another element that is relatively important is uh, A sub i, which is a demand at i. And so it's not just going to be, okay, each of these dots represent one unit, right? But we're really taking the demand into account, like for the MCLP, we try to maximize the population that was covered. Here, of course, we're going to multiply the distance that, you know, the demand has to travel to receive service uh, by, um, by the demand, of course. Okay. So let's move into the formulation. The formulation for the p-median is as follows. We're trying to minimize the weighted demand that is assigned to uh, various facilities. And we sum this up, right? So we sum up over the demand and also over the facilities. That's why you have two summation signs. The next um, uh, equation here is the first constraint. And it stipulates that each demand node must be uh, assigned to uh, one facility, right? At most one facility, uh, and at least one facility. So that's why it's equal to one. So no single demand node can be left um, unassigned. 
Here we're basically saying that if a demand node is assigned to a facility J, then that facility must be open. Otherwise, it's not, it, it doesn't make any sense. Um, this one is also quite important. This is sort of the upper uh, budget, uh, where we are saying that the total sum of the facilities that can open should be equal to P. You could also have less or equal to P. And then you have the regular integer constraint. A couple of things that I want to mention. We're not taking into account capacity problems in this one. Okay, we'll talk about this later. And then here, xij should be 0, 1. So it, this is quite important because a student cannot be sent 50% to a school and 50% to another school. At least in, in, for, that's, a, that's an example, right? Um, so this uh, could be, um, you know, could become fractional uh, in, in other examples, but, but certainly not in this one of, of school, for instance.